Lady Gough. Across the restless wilderness of water that is Pacific in name only, the United States Navy orders Halsey's 3rd Fleet and Kincaid's 7th Fleet to the Philippines. Sailing over the Mindanao Deep and into Lady Gulf, Allied soldiers and sailors come to answer the prayers of those who marched their way to death on Bataan two and a half years earlier. It is October 1944. The liberation of the Philippines will start with the island of Leyte. Seize the beaches, establish a base. Six simple words on which hangs the destiny of the Western Pacific. transports and landing craft. For the GIs, Lady Gulf is all out war. For the Japanese, Lady Gulf is the most tempting target ever offered. And the Japanese know it. They have long been waiting for the Allies to get out on a limb. They have long had a plan to cut off the limb. Down from the north, up from the south, in from the west, the Imperial Japanese Navy converges with three powerful forces to perform the surgery at Leyte Gulf. The entire remaining naval strength of Japan is mustered for one final, supreme battle. Loss of the Philippines will tear the Japanese Empire in two, cutting off the home islands from the oil, the resources, the wealth of the Indies and Southeast Asia, fatally crippling Japan's ability to wage war. The Lady Landings must be destroyed if Japan is to survive. The Naval High Command confesses, we are about to fight a battle that will decide the fate of our empire. The mission of our naval forces is truly great. course and speed to Halsey and Kincaid. Darter is lost, but the Americans are alerted. Intelligence from the submarines is analyzed and plotted aboard Admiral Halsey's flagship. The Third Fleet prepares its opening move in what is to be the greatest naval battle in all history. Halsey orders out his search planes orders them to pinpoint the Japanese.
Ramsey scouts find the Japanese Central Force in the Sibuyan Sea, headed east toward San Bernardino Strait. The enemy plans to sail through the strait and then set a southerly course for Leyte Gulf, a southerly course for slaughter. <laughs> From the flagship to all carriers, strike, repeat, strike, good luck. from its pilots and planes, all but destroyed in earlier battles. So anti-aircraft measures have been intensified in the hope the ships by themselves can beat off the Americans. The sailors prepare to throw up a wall of fire around their task force. southern force, in battle array and with all boilers lighted off, rips into the Mindanao Sea toward Surigao Strait, leading directly to Leyte Gulf from the southeast. Battleships, cruisers, destroyers lunge through the narrow waters, hoping to force the strait open and join up with the central force in the twin annihilation of the United States Army and Navy. But the jaws of an American trap are open. stopper in the bottleneck of Surigao Strait. Admiral Kincaid stuffs the bottleneck with PT boats, destroyers, cruisers, and battleships. American and Australian ships and sailors comprise a floating dam across the strait, strong in firepower, strong in determination to hold. The Admiral orders positions taken. PT boats, trained to attack anything afloat, with no defense but speed, skill, daring, patrol the southern end of Surigao Strait. In the fore of the battle line, these fragile sentinels prepare to draw the first blood. Behind the PT 
ATT patrol is the destroyer picket line. Behind the destroyers are the cruisers, and behind the cruisers, the battleships. All hands are quiet, tense, waiting. Japanese hurl themselves headlong through the dark, into the trap. Midnight, October 24th. Inside the Japanese force, detection gear picks up their enemy. Suddenly, brilliantly, searchlights dispel the night. The Battle of Surigao Strait is on. The PT sailors let go all torpedoes in their savage attack, throwing the enemy off balance. The PTs have done their job, located the enemy, attacked the enemy, betrayed the enemy to the bigger boys. Now destroyers, cruisers, battleships, all in position, all in battle stations, take up the fight. The Japanese are in the trap, and the jaws close. Japanese under their guns, the old battleships take their vengeance at Surigao Strait. The debris of Japanese disaster litters mile after mile of Surigao Strait. More than 5,000 Japanese sailors are wounded, missing, dead. The survivors, fanatical to the last, refuse to be rescued. The Japanese southern force is destroyed. But there is no time for celebration. To the north, San Bernardino Strait, unguarded, open waterway leading to the approaches of Lady Gulf. Through this passage, the Japanese central force of battleships, cruisers, destroyers, steams at 20 knots. This is the force that was turned back. But if it could turn once, it could turn again. And the turn it has toward Leyte. Only light American units, small escort carriers, destroyers, guard this approach to Leyte Gulf. The onrushing Japanese are first sighted by surprised, horrified search planes from the escort carriers. Should these 22 enemy ships break through, they will turn the Leyte landings into bloody shambles. Orders go out to the thin line of destroyers. Attack, hit the cruisers, block the battleships. These sailors sacrificed themselves for Leyte in the Battle of Samar. The largest warship ever built, 
the Yamato, mounting the biggest guns afloat. Open fire, orders the Japanese Admiral, letting the feeble defenders feel the full sting of the Imperial Navy. Barrage after barrage straddles the escort carriers, protected only by the intrepid destroyers. screens of real and chemical smoke between the escort carriers and the enemy, then bore in to deliver a furious torpedo attack, one of the most frantic, desperate actions of the war at sea. Every plane that can get off the escort carriers joins the unequal battle. Trained only for support of ground troops, the jeep pilots hit the Japanese with what they can, with all they have. The Japanese keep pounding away, smashing the reeling escorts, the dauntless destroyers. American attack continues, scattering and confusing the Japanese. Suddenly, the Japanese make an incredible decision. With parting salvos, they break off the fight. They turn back, this time for good. Five American ships, Gambier Bay, St. Lo, Johnston, Hull, Roberts, sunk. 2,800 casualties. Meanwhile, far to the north, off Cape Engano, the third Japanese force is discovered. A force that answers the question the Americans have been asking since the start of the battle for Leyte Gulf. Where are the carriers? The Japanese northern force includes four carriers, as well as battleships, cruisers, destroyers. Steaming on a southerly course, the carriers are the final threat to Leyte Gulf. decoy to lure Halsey's third fleet away from Leyte Gulf, while the central and southern forces drive the Americans out of the Philippines. The Japanese are hopelessly outclassed, short on training, short of planes. We will be sunk, their admiral admits. That is our mission. messages are intercepted by Halsey's radio men. The Admiral is confronted with a tough problem. Should he stay at Leyte or sink the Japanese carriers? Regarding his mission to be offensive rather than defensive, he orders the Third Fleet North.
The Japanese maneuver to receive the assault with massed, intense anti-aircraft fire. ships are the target. Few Japanese attackers break through, but a single bomber finds its single mark with a single bomb. Heedless of their greatest victory at sea. 